back to Musings by Nikki. I am here today to continue working on um, my nature journal, my grungy nature journal. This is part of a design team project for Tracy Fox Creative. Um, I am using kits from her uh, shop that uh, the main kit is called Fancy Forest. You can find those all linked in the description below. In our last video, we made the first type of envelope flip out. And that was this guy right here. And so it's like a big policy envelope flip out kind of with a windy guy closure and this cute little bumblebee down here. And then it's got a pocket on the front. So we made some of those in the last one. And now today I'm going to make my second type. And that is, so here's the flap, right? Clearly an envelope flap. And I've um, not fussy cut. I was going to say fussy cut. That would be obnoxious. I've used my... Um, my big kick, my die cut machine, and these grungy leaves, they are uh, Thinlets, Sizzix, these, uh, I don't know that they have a name on them, but anyway, this is a Tim Holtz die, and so these are the ones I'm using, and I am cutting out uh, leaves, and then here I've cut one out of the envelope, and I've made kind of a grungy bottom here full of extra goodness that's now hanging out underneath and it's a flip out as well and so and there's the envelope there so we're going to create another one of those today well or a couple and here are some envelopes different colors and sizes that I've already kind of grunged up and done some preliminary work to and then I am going to get out well, I'm, I'm not going to get out my big shot yet, cause or big kick. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So um, here's one of my cutting plates. Actually, that's, the, that's a rough one. Let's get the better of the two. I don't need both because I've got a magic mat on right now. The magic mat right here. These are awesome. You can get these at scrapbook.com. Um, and this is awesome. It's not magnetic. I kind of wish it was magnetic because those ones that are magnetic are super awesome, but this isn't that. Um, anyway, so I just use that as my bottom and this is the top to my sandwich. And I'm going to show you how I kind of set these up. So if I were to, like normal, just put this down and put the, you know, leaf on here and say, okay, I want to die cut that like that then it would go through not only this, but the backside. And I don't want it to come through the backside. So the way I'm gonna do this without, you know, like you can do it a couple different ways. If you spray this with some water or if you just gently lift up or use a scalpel, um, you can cut it open and then glue it back shut. However, because I am doing a super grungy journal, I want to, rip one edge open that's going to create so as it you know it opens like this it creates some extra stuff we're going to create some extra layering um, on the bottom that's going to kind of hang off the bottom of the page and create some texture on the bottom some interest on the bottom of the page so I'm going to tear open the one seam so if you want your envelope to flip out to the right like this then you tear open the seam. If you want it to flip open to the left, you tear the seam, right? So whichever way you're gonna go. So I'm, I just did one that way, so my example, so let's do this one this way. So we're gonna tear this seam open. In order to do that without just making it, like if I just start trying to go with my fingers, I'm gonna get, a, I, I could really mess this up. So to control kind of the mess, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my awl that I usually bind with and I'm going to just kind of start running it along the inside like this. Almost like a letter opener. If you had a letter opener, now would be a good time to use it. But, I and I thought, okay, there we go. I thought I would maybe do it with a, um exacto knife, but I kind of wanted a little bit of excess you know, a little flakiness if that happened and I was okay with it. So now we've got the one end open. So that's going to become my bottom, right? And we're going to eventually sew this back shut, but we're going to add some layers of stuff and junk in there. And one of the main reasons that we 
tear that off in the first place or open that seam up is so we can put now our board inside the envelope like so and essentially what's going to happen and you want to push it in as far as it'll go because your machine goes really close along this edge so you want to make sure it's pushed all the way on there and that way it will cut through the front but not the back right and so it is mine is pushed all the way over as possible and now I'm going to figure out where I want my leaves so I'll use this bigger one and in the other example I used um, just another piece of paper to line it but I think I'm gonna use vellum this time and see how that looks and I'm gonna kind of create I just want to create a two, two leaves maybe like that okay now in order to keep them exactly where I want them I'm going to flip my mat with them laid out like that I'm gonna flip my mat over carefully lay it down and then I'm gonna smash it all together and hold it together as best I can and flip it over and try to keep them in place okay now <laughs> Now I need to move this and bring up my, well, maybe I want to move it over this way so I can bring up my big kick, which weighs a thousand pounds. Not quite, but a lot of pounds. These things are heavy. Okay, uh, so I have the big kick by Sizzix and so it has the multi-purpose platform or extended platform or whatever. Um, you just leave them all shut for doing this way. And now I'm going to take my little sandwich I've got made over here and move it up here. And I'm just trying to hold this together as carefully as I can and get it ready to go in. And then I'm just going to send it through the machine. Now, when you do this, when you get to this part, it is, if you can kind of guide it in as flat and normal as possible, that's great. Um, sometimes it will get a little bendy and foldy and weird. That's because it's going through those high pressure rollers. And again, for this particular project, I don't care as much ooh, because I'm making a grungy journal. Okay, so let's slide that out. And there we go. We have got now the front part of this envelope cut out and it doesn't go through to the back. And we've got ourselves a couple of die cuts, a die cut leaves here that we can definitely use in other parts of the journal. I'm going to get the little fuzzy guys out. Okay, so that I've got that cleaned up. I've got that punched out. And then I'm going to line this with vellum, but we're going to do some other things to it first before we get there. I'm going to put these over in my pile up here of off cut or uh, die cut pieces. And then while I've got the machine up here, let's do our other two envelopes as well. Now, I will show you that if your envelope is happens to be wide enough but just wide enough you can insert oof, there we go the cutting platform inside now it has to be exact and here's why um, that it works brilliant except you know these edges here go really close to the edges here and it wants to kind of chew off the edge. Hold on, my daughter's vacuuming. Okay, I'm back. It's wonderful that she's vacuuming, don't get me wrong. It was just very loud all of a sudden. So uh, it wants to chew off the edges because it just comes in too tight into the machine and it's gonna wreck it. So 
if you're doing like I do and you don't care if it wrecks it, then maybe it's not a big deal. But I find that it's just easier to rip the one end open. Plus, it provides me the opportunity to, you know, grungify it anyway. So I'm going to do these other two. And sure, the minute I get rid of the, uh, the minute I get, there we go. The minute I get rid of the vacuum, here comes somebody buying a lawn tractor. So that one was going that side down, so I'll do this one this side down. Oh, that one's got a little bit bigger tear, and I'm actually okay with that. See how that kind of did some extra tear business there? That will be just fine. So I'm going to send this one through. I'm going to get it all set up. And again, I'm going to get it pushed way over to the edge and way down as around that as best I can. And then we'll decide what leaves I want over here. Decisive today, I, I am. Maybe I'll go like that, because then if I want to put something fun down in the corner, I can. Okay, I'm going to steam it up for this, because you can send it through this way as well. You don't have to have this plate on top. It's kind of the beauty of this thing. You can send it through this way. I will show you what that looks like. Okay. I'm trying to do this in a small space here and keep my everything in frame, but not be so far off that uh, that you guys can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Those cut well. So there, we've got our two cool leaves, die cut leaves, and we will definitely use those. And then we've got our envelope that now has this nice big leaf cut out. I'm going to do the last one and uh, I'll fast forward through it. something quick because if I send it through this is gonna hit here I am going to fold it back over this way which is just fine because um, the die cuts are facing or the the dies are cutting down right now and so um, it won't hit it won't cut them it will only cut down so I'm gonna do that and then place this over the top because of the pressure it did slightly cut this one little part here um, so but that's okay I was kind of planning on showing you what I did with the other envelope that had a peak like this I cut one out of there anyway so maybe what I'm gonna do is let's see what do I want to do I was gonna say maybe I would try and line that one up and just kind of let it go let it let it be a thing but now I don't remember which die that was. It's the big one, I think. Is that this one? Yeah, it was that one. Oh, let's see if I can do this. Oh, no, it's gonna be hard because it's too wide. 
So you know what? I'm not gonna, we'll figure something else out with it, um, which is fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this back down because we're done with this guy for now. All right, so now we have our three envelopes that look janky as heck right now, but let's fix that and make that better. Here comes the lawn tractor again, of course. Uh, you know what, before I get that, I'm gonna get this. So here I've got just a fresh, clean piece of vellum, pretty darn see-through, and I thought it would be fun to line some of these. Now the last one, I, the example one, I lined it with another piece of paper, but I thought it would be fun to line these with vellum because then whatever we stick in there, in the pocket, you'll be able to see through, which I thought would be kind of fun. So I'm going to uh, cut this. Well, actually, I'm not going to cut. I'm going to tear because I don't mind if some hangs out below this edge. Matter of fact, it's kind of what I'm going for. And then up along here, I just want, I'm gonna just get some off for now. Okay, then along here, I want it to come, you can see that inked line there is where the fold is. So I need it to come just below that, but not, much because I needed to um, cover that leaf and I want it to go all the way around the edges on the inside here so that when I slide things in and out it doesn't get caught okay so I'm going to attempt to carefully tear just along and I could use my tear ruler but that would be silly that'd be too smart this is the only part right here where I'm concerned. There, then once I get past that, I don't. it doesn't matter so much. I can go back down again. Okay, now, before I put this in, I'm gonna ink a couple of places. So first, I'm using forest moss, and I'm gonna ink along the top here, because we'll see that. And then I'm going to ink along this bottom torn edge because that will be hanging out. And then the other place I'm going to ink is to try and bring these leaves out a little more. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you could use a brush to try and get in there and see if you can ink the edges. And I do that with... Uh, some success this is also a craft envelope with you know it's already kind of dark but then the other way is once I've done that it brings it out just a little but not enough and I want a little more definition so I'm going in with my black soot and I'm going to just kind of carefully hit some of the edges you know without trying to bend or or fold anything in too much I'm just gonna try and bring some definition. I know people say like Q-tips for this. That seems, you know, like a really great idea. It seems tedious. And um, if I were doing something where I weren't, you know, where it wasn't so grungy, then maybe I would consider doing that. But right now, because this is grunge, uh, grungy and rustic, you know, I really don't mind the over inking or the, the inking, crazy inking here. Okay, so there, now they stand out just a little bit more. See that they've got some border definition. So I'm going to put that stuff back over there. Going to readdress our vellum. Make sure that inked edge is coming out the, the bottom there. All right. And that should be just fine. I've got one little peak here where it's a little too high. So I'm just going to kind of fold that over. 
and ink, ink, ink. Okay, so now that folds over and we've got our vellum part. But I don't just want to like sew this shut. Oh, this needs a little green ink on this side. I don't just want to sew it shut with just the vellum. I want to create some interest with some of my scraps. Let me grab that. So since this is going to be closing like this and this will be hanging out, I want to create some interest down here that will kind of hang out the bottom of the book. So I'm going to take some of my scraps that I have been working with and just kind of layer some in. And I don't even mind if they stick up into the bottom of this die cut a little bit um, at all. Ooh, a bug just flew into my face. And remember that you're going to see it on both sides, the interest that we're creating here. So I'm going to go with... Okay, so now see how it looks like it's just kind of some layered up goodness here. So now when I come sewing across, this is going to just have some fun stuff that will hang out the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and at this point, I'm going to sew back and forth just across this edge because it's the only edge that I'm worried about. I don't have to worry about these two sides because they are already still sealed. We didn't break them open. We just broke this side open. You know, I want something else grungy in there. Maybe I'll put the dark brown side of this out. Dark brown side down there and then some of this. I'm going to rough it up and ink. Some of that in behind here. So then I go to my sewing machine and like I said, I'm going to sew back and forth on this bottom part several times. Um, and I, I'm doing messy stitching, so I don't care necessarily what it looks like. The grungier, the better. So I'm just going to sew this seam back shut and I'll be back in a second. All right, I have sewn my envelope back shut, so it is back behaving like an envelope now <laughs> because we've closed that side. Um, and I'm going to do my trick to get rid of some of the like little sewing pieces, um, the little pop through stuff. I just glide my ink over it and that takes care of that. And then in order to, so we've secured the vellum on this side, but we haven't secured it on these two sides. And just so somebody doesn't try to slide it through the wrong way here, we want them to go into this side. I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to go under just the edge here a little bit. I'm going to avoid this part where it comes right up to the top. And then I'll go over here a little bit. And I'm just going to push that down and that'll secure it so that it's obvious. Um, this way it's obvious which, there we go, which side you put the you know, insert into because you won't be able to put it in the this top part. And I'm just kind of using my finger to roll that edge over a little bit where I tore it because I like that little, you know. A few little spots here where it was a little high points I just kind of rolled them back this will dry a little nicer and um, whoops upside down and then now we've got this lovely thing so let me grab let me see if one of these fits in there is this too big or will it fit oh too big I was gonna try and show you what something in there would look like but here let me I'll just grab a smaller tag so now when we put our tags in, right, we've got, we can see through the window. So now we've created essentially like a window envelope, right? And you can go on and decorate this up more. I did a couple of times use some of the, um, I've used some of the die cut 
like this to kind of layer on top to further the, you know, leaf illusion, the leaf look. Um, we've got the green ones too. You know, you could do some layering up. Um, and that would look cool, right? Uh, we could put some, let me, do I have a, oh yeah, a loose piece of cheesecloth. Because, you know, in my book, cheesecloth makes everything better. Let's shred that apart a little. And I could put the green one down and then some cheesecloth and the white one over top of that. I think I'll do that. So I'm going to glue this down. It's getting hot outside. I've got my window open. But these last few days, the other morning I woke up and it was like 46 degrees outside. It felt like fall. And it's so odd because so much of the rest of our country right now is like, you know, having deep heat issues. And up here all of a sudden it felt like fall. And so I, um, you know, as if it is a, it's almost like a, oops, I'm going to go with some black on this one. Since it's so white, I will do some black. Just hit the edges with it. Um, because it's fall, it's like an, an instinct where I, I get out my crocheting and start wanting to make a scarves and sweaters and stuff. So I was sitting on the deck the other evening with a blanket on. Um, with, well, not a blanket, with a, my crochet over my legs like a blanket and having a cup of coffee out on the deck on the swing. And I was like, oh, this is gorgeous fall weather. And yeah, but you got to know in Minnesota, that doesn't last long. The weather changes its mind every five minutes. And it's still August, which is the dog days of summer around here. And it's county fair weekend this weekend. I was talking about that in my last video. And so um, county fair weekend can be anything between, like it can be cool and rainy or it can be, you know, 95 and humid as all get out. It can be anything in between. You just never know. Looks like this year it should be fairly nice. But it's starting to get hot today. I think the high is supposed to be like 89 or something. Okay, I like how that looks. It's layered up. I've got some cheesecloth. I've got my die cuts. I've got my grungy bottom. And so now let me choose a signature here and I'll show you. This one's got the flip out envelope that we made, the big policy envelope thing. So let's find somewhere later in the signature to put that in. Oh, here. Oh no, that's got pockets built in. Maybe this page here. Yeah. That looks cool. These look good with that kind of that green there. So then what you just decide is, okay, first you want to have it so it hangs out the bottom a little, right? I like it to go all the way to the bottom because I like it to add just more layers of grunge and layering as you're kind of looking through the book. And now you can do one of two things. You can just, well, you can do several things. I don't, you can clip this in. I'm not your mom, right? <laughs> you can just put a paper clip and then it can be removable. You can tear this down a little bit. So I think that's what I've done. Yeah, so here I've torn the flap of that policy envelope just to kind of give it a rustic edge, right? So you could tear this down and glue it on, or you can, you could sew it on, or you can do what I think I will do is I'm going to turn this into a tuck spot. So I am going to um, go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew along the bottom and up the side and it will become then a tuck spot on this back page and it will still be a flip out on this front page. So I'm going to go sew this on and I will be right back. There we go. I now have this sewn on, so I've got a tuck spot here that I can, you know, put some things into, and then I've got my envelope, let's put this back in 
its place in the signature here. So I've got my flip out envelope and I've got space to put things in there. I could decorate the back, you could put a pocket here. It just really depends on how much bulk you're you know, willing to accept, but since there's a pocket here and that's gonna be sewn shut and have stuff in it, I don't wanna over bulk up this section. So I'm going to just leave it as such. And then I've got the extra stuff hanging out there. And then when you flip it, I've got it hanging out the bottom there as well, which just creates some extra texture and dimension along with all my like, you know, ripped up and torn up and grungy grunge pages. So there is one done. Let's do one more. Let's do this light colored white one. Let's see if the this inking does anything more for the white envelope if hitting the edges of it. Let's see if that did much. Mm, I might try to hit it a little bit with the black ink anyway, just because I really like the way that that defines it. Oh, and this is the one that's got that like tear so we'll have to decide what I'm gonna do there I say we'll have to decide like you know I wish that you guys could put some input in but actually it's just me that has to decide oh, that might be the bobcat arriving we had some gravel my mom and dad live kitty corner and had some gravel delivered today and then the rest of it came over here to spread around out back and get a fire pit going finally out behind our big shop um so i'm kind of excited so our friend my brother-in-law uh, has a friend who has like all the fun equipment like bobcats and stuff so he's bringing it over to spread it our gravel for us very grateful this piece will fit in there. It's not going to leave me much exciting edge down there, but that's okay. I can create that with scraps. I want to make sure that I get this all the way down into this corner is what I'm trying to make sure that I've got it all the way down in there. And I think I do. And now I'm going to do the thing where I tear this off. But as you can see, I've got here, I've got a little bit more space than I did on the last one. So I still have to be careful as I come across there, but... Um, I can over tear rather than under tear because then I can just kind of roll it over with my finger. And of course we're going to ink all of that. Okay, I've got it in. I've got my window envelope going on. I've got my torn side, so you know the drill. We are going to add some scraps down in here to try to create some interest. So let me see how, what I can find. And remember, you're going to see this on front. You're going to see front and back. So I'm going to try and make sure that I am paying attention to making sure there's some scrappiness on both sides. And again, I don't mind if it comes up a little bit, peeks up through the leaf thing there. I don't mind that at all. Maybe I'll go with some of this green. Try to make a weird tear. Oh, 
Okay, I like the amount of layering that's going on there. And I don't mind the way it looks on back either. So I'm gonna go do the same thing. I'm gonna sew this shut and I'll be right back. There we go, all sewn shut. So it is an envelope once again. Now I need to do the same thing where I remember where my glue is. Oh, over here. And I'm gonna just put some little bits of glue to attach the vellum to the envelope, right? So that it people don't, you know, accidentally stick the, the insert in between. And then I'm gonna use my nails and fingers here this is uh, this is mostly all this grunge is inspired by, you know, Luisa Heinzel, Luisa, and uh, her wonderful channel and her propensity for awesome grunginess, and she calls these the finger tools, the finger tools. I love when she says that. I think it's so fun. She's like, let's use the finger tools to do this. So I'm just kind of rolling that edge over a little bit and making it jaggedy and scrappy so that this can, you know, fold over just fine. All right, so that is sealed up. This, I think I'm gonna fold this over, coming out of there a little bit. Yeah, and grunge that up a little too. Awesome, I like that. So that's gonna be uh, hanging out on the bottom there and we can put stuff in and now I've got to do something here and then I've got to decide do I want to put um, I think I will put just one but maybe I will put behind it I've got some fun little scraps of scraps of random here that might look kind of fun except um, Usually I sew that down and I'm not going to be sewing here. So we'll be gluing. So let's just go for the, the standby cheesecloth. The good old, good old, good old. All right. And I'm going to just cut off a hunk of it because I don't need it to go like behind everything. I'm just gonna pull it apart without totally pulling it apart. I'm gonna push it to the edge. I'm gonna tear it to its edge till it's just barely holding together. <laughs> That's the look I like. Like it might totally fall apart if I tried pushing it any further. And then I'm gonna hit the edges of this with some black that's just left on my dauber just to bring it out a little better, define it a little better. Be very careful on the little, little stem. All right, now I'm gonna get some glue on this. Okay. Now I'm gonna just press that down for a second. <laughs> Recap my glue. And then I've got the next signature and I will decide where this one's gonna go. Let me grab the next signature here. Because then I can decide what I'm gonna do here. I think because of that, I think I'm going to do where I just tear this off and create a smaller hinge. I will keep this scrap that I am tearing off. This will go in the scrap bin because that can become part of the fodder for something else. And this new edge will get inked. And hit it with a little black too. All right, now let's find it a home in this signature. Ooh, it would look really great on this page here, right? 
How fun is that? It fits perfect. It works very well there. But I want it to go down to the bottom so it's hanging off the edge. And then I'm going to come here and put my glue. So the last one I sewed in, this one of course, I am just going to glue it in. And that will be that. This is a great way to, um, I love flip outs for this reason, because you can add a lot of layer and dimension to a page, but still preserve its uh, writing space. Oh my gosh, there we go. Right, so here you can still totally journal here. This, pa this book does not have a whole lot of journaling pages by the time I'm done with this thing. <laughs> it's not going to have a, a whole lot of journal space, potentially. But this is a, a page you could totally journal on. But now it looks decorated as well because it's got some um, a flip out on it. You can flip out and you could actually journal back here as well. But now it looks decorated when you first come to this page, right? Plus, I love flip outs because it's just another fun interactive thing. But there we go. There's another one. So um, let's see. Maybe I will just fast forward through doing this last one. And um, that way the video isn't like forever long. Let's see if I can get this last piece to fit. together and I just need to create a spot for it here in this final journal that one's got a flip out already some of this is stuff that I'd already worked on oh that might be kind of oh maybe here this is kind of a fun spot there I like that spot right there I like this kind of richer color combination here. So now, again, I have to decide what I'm going to do here, but I think I'm going to go ahead and tear this down because I want to preserve the journaling space on this page. I'm going to keep this. I'll go in the scrap bin. And... This will go along the edge. And I'm going to hit it with black because I like to do the most. Okay. Okay, where was I going to put it here? Or do I want it here? Well, no, I like it right here. And I'm going to keep it towards the bottom of the page again because I like this junk hanging out. So now, with the completion of one of these envelope flips for every one of my four signatures, and the policy envelope flip outs for each signature, um, all that is left to do, which is no small task, is to start going through and decorating the signatures, which um, making tuck spots and pockets and all that sort of stuff. I have already made a bunch of tags and fodder to stick into pockets and things. So, um, but I will always need more ephemera, I'm sure. I always usually do. There we go. I like how that looks too. And like, look when it closes up, it now you can see this hanging out the bottom. 
Isn't that yummy? Scrappy goodness. <laughs> so now that we've got that done, um, I will probably in my next video, maybe we will start decorating. Let's just put something in here so we can see through the pocket. This little woodpecker. Look at cute. Um, so in this next, in the next video, maybe I'll just take you guys along if you're interested and just kind of watch my absolute manic, um, process of, <laughs> of decorating journal signatures, uh, before I get to the point where I'm going to start creating a cover for the journal. Um, I do have the single signature version of this journal set done, um, except for, save for the, um, cover. I mean, it's obviously not bound into anything, but it is decorated and stuffed full of goodness. And so I can't wait to show you guys a flip through of that once it's already done. But um, I can't wait to get these other two signature or four signatures done as well. So I have got those envelopes in there and I've got my four signatures here. So I thank you guys for hanging out with me for a little while today. I hope that you had fun. I hope that we did something creative and you found some inspiration. I hope that you are having a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night, whatever side of this globe of ours that you live on, whatever time it is there. And until I see you guys next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless you. Bye-bye.